Hey there, welcome to The Reinsurance Podcast, the place where we dive into all things reinsurance, the coolest part of insurance. We're your hosts, Jared and Ben, a couple of ex-practitioners who loved the industry so much we founded Superseed to tackle some of its biggest headaches. And we're here to share our insights and stories with expert guests as we uncover what's really going on in the industry. Welcome back, everybody, to another Reinsurance Podcast episode back in Monaco. Uh, delighted to have Andrew Caswell with us, who is here to share many, many exciting learnings from his time as Underwriting Transformation Lead at PwC, where we did indeed this morning benefit from a, a brilliant event with an amazing breakfast uh, over at the Hermitage. But Andrew, you're here to give us a private edition. How indeed. are you? I'm very good. I'm hot. Yes. I'm hot. The yacht has got from that, <laughs> There's no air conditioning on the yacht, but apart from that, I'm all good. Yeah. Well, it's better than the rain we had yesterday, at least, in, in many ways. <laughs> uh, that could have been worse. But could you give us maybe a very broad highlight of the, the big themes that PwC have been sharing uh, this morning and in general? Yeah. I mean, this morning, obviously, for us, was more about kind of the effect of Gen AI and AI more, more kind of broadly on, on the reinsurance market. Um, and I think kind of our, our overall view is that AI in the broadest sense of that word, not just Gen AI, but AI does have the capacity to kind of reinvent reinsurance, but that's a much more longer term play. Yeah. And I think certainly in the shorter term, you're going to have much more kind of operations transformation and business transformation led by AI. But I think the most important thing for us is that AI on its own in, in isolation, you know, you struggle to scale it. It struggles to be transformative on its own. It has to be combined with the right foundations. You have to build AI on top of the right foundations. And I think that for us is about standardization of process. It's about standardization of data. It's about automation, constructed kind of data. Uh, and when you have those things together with good technology, then kind of that combined with AI, I think certainly can transform the underwriting process within reinsurance, transform the kind of Seedent's perspective, the seedent's ability to make mm. good decisions about where they place reinsurance. So I think that was kind of the broad theme. Yes, yeah. AI, everybody's kind of very excited about it, especially yeah. at WASP. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, it's about the foundations and putting those in place and bringing those things together to create real transformative effects, I think. Yeah, no, amazing. And, I, and I, I did find it really refreshing, actually, to hear from you guys this morning talking about technology and AI from the lens of a market that's still sedent, broker, reinsurer, and how do you take you know, problems, real problems, and solve things with actual purpose, right? It wasn't about, oh, how do we use this new whizzy AI thing? It was like, okay, what, what's the process here? What are we trying to solve? How do we make genuine improvements? And I found that very compelling from you guys. How, how are you finding it from market response being here at Monte Carlo? I feel like you've got pretty amazing credentials with your Microsoft partnership and the, the whole co-pilot thing you're doing, but how are people responding to a guide through this AI chapter they might be able to go on. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's obviously extremely excited. There's lots of buzz, there's lots of noise about AI in the market. You guys obviously know that as well as I do. And I think people are kind of, certainly our clients across those three value chain players are crying out for help and guidance mm -hmm. as to where to start, how to scale, how for it to be transformative. I think what we've seen, you know, across the reinsurance market is small proof of concepts mm. in certain kind of niche areas. But as I said, I think that without the broader foundations and transformational thinking and the end-to-end -end thinking, you struggle to scale and just remains a proof of concept. So I think people have been extremely, I think, receptive yeah. to I, that. And I think probably helped by the fact that you very bravely, I think nobody is, is normally able to do this, right? In, in this, how should the future of reinsurance work? You actually gave demos this morning of, well, here's a production version of how it could work kind of thing, which was very cool. Do you want to share a bit about that and how you were able to show the future working in action? Yeah. I mean, I think, again, it just goes back to a lot of what we were talking about with AI. You know, there's a lot of noise. Lots of people talk very conceptually about it. And I think we wanted to talk much more practically, much more specific, as you say, focus on real use cases, real pain points, and show how bringing capability together with AI can really solve those pain points. And I think you know, for us, based on our experiences in the market, we've be, uh, built out a series of, of assets that takes that kind of view of the future and, and has built it and has shown, been able to show clients what it looks like. They can touch it. They can feel it. They can see what that process looks like. And they can see where AI, on top of that kind of rich, structured data set, can add even more value. So I think, you know, that was our 
start point, really take our experiences, kind of physicalize those um, in a set of assets um, that just shows our thinking rather than us kind of, you know, we're consultants, right? So, you know, I, I love PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> Which consultant doesn't love PowerPoint? I absolutely adore PowerPoint. But I mean, you know, I think clients want more, and so we wanted to go beyond the conception, the theoretical, and the PowerPoint to actually people being able to touch it, feel it, and play with it. I think that's when it becomes really real. So that was kind of always our, our perspective. And very, very cool. And, and the other thing that came to light, I think, quite well this morning, and when you presented sort of the, the vision for the future of reinsurance, was your integration of co-pilot uh, capabilities within the PwC workbench, for example, uh, for underwriters. How have you found it uh, working with Microsoft, being able to actually you know, harness that power that obviously seems to sit outside of you know, the insurance industry at the moment? The race, the AI arms race, is very much led by these massive tech giants. I, are you able to sort of harness that and bring it back into the insurance industry so that we, we stand a chance at using it? We're, we're trying. We're trying, Ben. We're trying. I mean, you know, we have a really good, deep relationship with Microsoft across the firm. Um, they're one of our top three alliances. We do a huge amount of business with them. Um, and I think, you know, if you talk to Microsoft, what they'll say is we've got amazing technology, but we don't understand mm. industry verticals. Yeah and the specific pain points that industry verticals have and therefore how those technology and solutions are applied is something that Microsoft are looking for help with. And, yeah. you know, we've, as I said, we've got a deep partnership with them within insurance. We're helping them to think through what the right business use cases are for kind of AI, co-pilot, um, and then open AI as well as part of that kind yeah. of relationship. And uh, we've helped a number of clients think through kind of co-pilot business cases, how, how we help clients scale co-pilot, um, and yet, again, how you embed co-pilot and co-pilot type capabilities at the right point in the in the user journey to, to add the most value. So, yeah. um, you know, early days with, that, with this technology and, and with everything we're doing in this space, but, uh, but I think definitely more to see. What, what are the, the sort of main areas that you're seeing as sort of low-hanging fruit areas that we can actually start to make a difference on? I know there's some bits that need standardizing, other bits where you can start to bring in, you know, some of the the, the LLM type approach to actually look at, you know, how can a co-pilot help you interpret something? Where, where are the obvious places to start? From an AI perspective specifically. Yeah. I mean, I think the obvious one and where you're already seeing good traction is in that submission space and the scraping, structuring, and standardizing of that submission data pack. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you've already seen a lot of insure tech activity in that space. MIA, Cognisure, Eigen, Instabase, Indico, a lot of people playing in that space. And I think, you know, those type of capabilities have become pretty accurate now. And you're seeing a lot of our clients seeking to try and standardize and structure that, that submission using that kind of capability. So I think that definitely is one area. Um, I think the other one, and you've already touched on it, is that kind of underwriting co-pilot. Yeah. You know, I think it, you know, it's, and this is a, a great generative AI use case, mm -hmm. not a broader AI, but specifically generative. And why generative? Because well, like, I think what generative gives you, it gives you the ability to ask real, specific, kind of real language questions. Yeah, yeah. That in, in how the, you know, you and I might talk mm -hmm. or an underwriter might talk to a, a UA. And I think those embedded at the right point in the journey means that they can be kind of specific um, and, and contextualized within that decision journey that an underwriter goes on about where they attach and line size. And, and so I think that combined with the intuitive nature of generative AI and them able to ask questions of the data like they would ask questions of a, a UA who prepared a, an analysis of the exposure, I think can, yeah. can help. And we've seen, you know, again, there's not widespread adoption of that in the market, but we've definitely seen interest. And I think mm -hmm. people thinking about how that certainly might help. Very cool. And we've done our dues, I feel, to AI at this point. We have. We've, we've we have. successfully covered it off. <laughs> You've heard it here first. That, that's how to make sense of AI this year at Monte Carlo. <laughs> Outside of AI, and putting your broader underwriting or, or just general reinsurance transformation hat on, what are the main things that you're seeing happen well or not well in the market at the Oof. moment? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think what we are seeing is a huge amount of investment across the market mm -hmm. um, in technology. Let's just use that as yeah. the broadest, broadest sense of that. You know, 
pretty much everybody of scale that we're talking to is trying to leverage data and technology to free up their underwriters to help them make better decisions through better, more structured, richer data. Mm. So everybody's, I think, got this similar vision for where they want to get to. Mm. Um, I think what we see is then the execution on that vision is patchy yeah. in places. And it's a difficult thing to execute on because you know, these businesses have grown up as kind of underwriter fiefdoms yes. in many regards. The yeah. underwriter has been able to do pretty much whatever they've wanted as long yeah. as they're bringing in business and, and that business is profitable. So, you know, moving from that world to a world that has to be more standardized, mm. more structured, um, is, is a difficult, it's yeah. a difficult change challenge, it's a difficult cultural mm. challenge for these organizations. So often where we've seen programs fail, and we've seen quite a lot of that, is it's not about the technology, it's never about the technology. Mm. It's always about the adoption, the implementation, how it's been implemented. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of our, our broad our broad sense of where organizations are trying to go. I think, you know, I think people are starting to wake up to the fact that this has to start with data. Yeah. Um, but slowly. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Extremely slowly, but it has to start with data. Yeah. It absolutely does. And so I think... Um, I think over the next six to nine months, you'll start to see more and more focus, I think, on getting that data right. Certainly at the point of submission, I think, getting that right structure data from seed and into, into broker and then from broker into, mm -hmm. into, into reinsurer. Yeah. I think that's absolutely critical. And do you think, uh, incentive-wise, the market's ready to push a bit harder now? The, a, a comment made by John Neal this morning I found very interesting was, nobody ever saved money on technology projects, which I thought was very bold, but he said, maybe AI will be the exception where actually we will save money on technology. What, what then do you think is the modern rationale to be pushing hard on technology? I mean, most of our use, most of the business case I think that we see are, are predicated on loss ratio. Hmm. Um, you know, the idea that providing underwriters with better data, yeah. with better, better data and more timely data, cross portfolio data, and better tools, um, you're able to aid in their decision making, yep. help them out select, which, you know, depending on which business case you look at, could drive a one to two percent loss ratio reduction, yeah. which is significant. Yeah. Um, so I think most of the business cases we've seen are predicated on loss ratio. Um, growth obviously is always a big yep. factor as well. Absolutely. And I think this idea of freeing underwriters up, being out in the market more, um, I think is a is a really is a great use case and a great business case. I mean, I, I think um, the student use case is a really interesting use case as well, though. I think if you look at insurers mm. and the insurers that, you know, um, are, let's say, beating out the market, CFC is a good example, I think, of this. Um, one of their, I think, really differentiating capabilities is their ability to buy reinsurance are really nuanced. Yeah. Um, and, co and complex, they have really complex reinsurance programs, yeah. outwards reinsurance programs, and their ability to buy kind of reinsurance, I think, is really sophisticated. Yeah. And I think that, as a use case, I think is going to increase in importance. We're seeing a lot of focus now on outwards reinsurance, a lot of focus on kind of the suboptimal processes, the suboptimal data, mm -hmm. the manual effort that's going in that place, and the ability there, you know, and the desire, I think, of of students to be able to capture better data to help them make better decisions about outwards placement. So I think yeah. that's a, and I think that's a use case that you know you guys are obviously focused on that. I think it's a really interesting use case, and I think it's definitely one that we'll see grow over the next six to twelve months. Would be my yeah, absolutely. My perspective. It's, it's certainly been a, a strong theme the last couple of years that re reinsurance is not going to suddenly go soft again. You know, we're in a position where. You can't just have it for free and for not trying very hard. So the pressure it feels is hitting home on a lot of outwards buyers at the moment. They do feel the need to make sure they're buying right, winning the beauty contest, and actually getting deals home that are pretty fundamental to the business they do. So That's absolutely right. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm sure you're having similar conversations to us there with the, uh, the buyers at the conference. Very much so. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, very much so. And so, with what remains of the conference, uh, any exciting conversations to look forward to, or topics that you want to dive into a bit more deeply? <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, there's obviously, you know, 
a lot of talk about technology and data and AI. I think we've done that one today. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the other big theme is about kind of capital, capital innovation, ILS, the amount of capital in ILS, I think, is significant. And I think, you know, people are talking about, oh, there's been no new syndicates set up and no new capital. But actually, if you look at capital flows, you know, a significant portion now going into ILS. So it's yeah. not there's no new capital, it's just there's different forms of yeah. innovation around capital. I think that's a really interesting space to watch um, about how, you know, what we're talking about around automation and data and straight through processing and algorithmic might kind of expand into the capital space. Mm. And now you might get to an interesting, very futuristic world of kind of you know, some kind of algo ILS yeah, type right. model where essentially it's matching capital, the algo is matching capital to kind of seed and reinsurance. I mean, it's interesting. Mm. It's pretty far out, but I think, yeah. you know, I think there's some, there's definitely some interest in that um, yeah. thinking out there. There's, def there's definitely a lot of interesting ideas coming to the table. It's, as you said earlier, the, the culture challenge and figuring out how the human in the loop, how the relationships that endure decades and so on all adapt to include or reject some of these these new concepts so we'll watch with bated breath i'm sure i uh, andrew it's been brilliant having you on the show it's been a pleasure thank you I, for having me i look forward to bumping into you again on the uh, streets of monaco you definitely over will. the coming days but uh, definitely yeah will. look forward to hearing more about the success of pwc's initiatives and guidance through this tricky and very exciting time we're indeed in. and thank you for having me good luck to super Seed. i think you guys do a great job so um i'm looking thank forward you. to working together more in the future as well Likewise. Indeed. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Reinsurance Podcast. If you enjoyed our show, don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review to let us know how we're doing, preferably five stars. For more insights and updates, follow us on LinkedIn and visit our website at superseed.com forward slash podcasts. You'll find the links in the show notes.